This short screencast is about continuous distillation, equilibrium stages and tray efficiency. The aim is to identify important parts of a distillation setup and to explain physical trays versus ideal trays or equilibrium stages or theoretical plates. There are three different names for the same thing. To explain overall tray efficiency and to explain how lines drawn in the McCabe Thiele's graphical method relate to composition at different heights of the distillation column. To our aid, we will have a slightly exaggerated system curve for ethanol water, exaggerated to make it easier to follow. So this is the system curve. We have the liquid composition on the x-axis and the gas composition on the y-axis. And this red here is the system curve. And we draw the diagonal. And what happens if we have a 15 mole percent liquid boiling? Well, we go straight up to the system curve and find that the condensing gas that is in equilibrium with such a boiling liquid has this composition. But the system curve crosses the diagonal at this point, and that's called the azeotropic point. What happens there? Well, if we have a liquid of this composition that boils, it will be in equilibrium with the condensing gas of this composition. And since we're on the diagonal, this is exactly the same composition. So we can't get past the isotropic point by distillation. Okay, so let's look at the real setup. This is the setup you will be using in the lab. We have a reboiler here at the bottom to make sure that it boils all the time. And a rising vapor goes through the column. And then we have a total condenser in the top that makes sure that we have a falling liquid. And the trays make sure that we have a good contact between the falling liquid and the rising vapor. And the temperature is lowest up here where we cool and warmest down here where we heat. And thus we will have richer in volatile component up here and richer in less volatile component down here. To treat this mathematically we simplify and treat it as equilibrium stages and we will soon explain what that is. The total condenser doesn't add anything to the separation. It just makes sure that all the rising vapor condenses and then is led back to uh, the distillation column. And in this setup you will be using, there is actually a total reflux. The entire flux here goes up and comes down again. Nothing is taken out. And that is just to make the lab much more simple to do. Okay, I've drawn three equilibrium stages. The bottom one here is the reboiler. The reboiler is perfect equilibrium stage. While the trays, we can't really be sure how many we need. So the choice of three here is arbitrary. We don't know how many we want because we don't know the efficiency of these trays. Okay, but what is an equilibrium stage? Well, it's a segment of the distillation column to which we have an incoming flow of vapor and an incoming flow of liquid from above. So at this stage, some liquid will evaporate and some gas will condense. And we will form a new liquid and a new gas. And the new rising gas will have a slightly different composition, slightly higher in the volatile component than this flow here and the resulting liquid we have a slightly lower content of the volatile compound than the flow up here. And an equilibrium stage is a stage where or a segment where all inflows and outflows are in equilibrium with each other. So let's make a simple McCabe Thiele's graphical method solution to the system assuming that we have exactly three equilibrium stages. We have a total condenser in the top from which we have a liquid flux of a certain composition, namely the distillate composition, Xd. Now, what is the composition of the vapor that comes to the total condenser? Well, the total condenser doesn't add any separation. It just condenses everything that comes up, so the composition must be the same. So we just go up to the diagonal and then straight out. That's the composition. Okay, now what is the composition of the liquid falling down from this equilibrium stage? Well, that 
flow here must be in equilibrium with this flow here so a condensing gas must be in equilibrium with this boiling liquid and that's the point given by this system curve so this is the composition now we have drawn our first triangle our first equilibrium stage so what is the composition of the vapor coming to stage one well we already know the composition of these three flows and we have only one flow left the last flow so we can solve that by using a mass balance and under certain conditions which you can read more about in the compendium mass balances are straight lines and if we have total reflux which we have in the lab then that line is the diagonal so this is the mass balance so we must be on this point down here so thus this is the composition of the vapor coming to layer one or equilibrium stage one from equilibrium stage two and then we just repeat the liquid that's falling down from equilibrium stage two must be given by the system curve so that's this point here and then the racing and now we have drawn our second equilibrium stage and the vapor coming to equilibrium stage two must be given by the mass balance and then finally the liquid flux from the reboiler or the liquid composition in the reboiler must be given by the system curve and that's our third equilibrium stage okay let's look into more detail again the lines and the compositions so we have a mass balance and we have the system curve which tells us about the gas liquid equilibrium and we draw triangles for the equilibrium stages so this is equilibrium stage n and our notation is that the vapor flux leaving equilibrium stage n has an index n as well as the liquid flux leaving equilibrium stage n and inflows and outflows are in equilibrium with each other horizontal lines in xy diagram represents gas flows while vertical lines represent liquid flows and you can remember that by thinking that on a vertical line all the points on that line have the same liquid composition while on a horizontal line all points have the same gas composition okay let's draw these different flows here in this diagram here so this flow here coming to equilibrium stage n is the line here coming to the triangle n so gas fluxes move upwards the n plus n moves in this direction up to the next and this one moves up to the next and we in our this course we start counting from above so the equilibrium stage one is the one at the top and the liquid fluxes go down from equilibrium stage n minus one to equilibrium stage n so that's this flux here and this one goes from equilibrium stage n to equilibrium stage n plus one and it's this one here what about physical trace well we said that we have a number of physical trace and we represent them with a number of equilibrium stages but the trace can never be 100 percent efficient so the physical trace are always more than a number of equilibrium stages and to calculate the overall tray efficiency we simply divide the equilibrium stages inside the column with the physical trace inside the column and note here that it's the equilibrium stage inside the column we deal with and that's because the reboiler is a perfect equilibrium stage and if we have a partial condenser that's also a perfect equilibrium stage 